Hello, it's Chris from Chris and Acrylic Pouring. We're based in East Sussex in the UK and thank you for joining me today. I'm doing four flip cups and I'm playing around with silicon, so I hope you find it interesting and informative. I've been doing a lot of blue pours recently and I was desperate to use this crimson. It's a Dela Rowley System 3 crimson and it's a really lush colour. So this pour, I'm looking at two things. I'm going to have graduated cups as usual, but in the first cup I'm going to have two drops of silicon in the metallic gold, the second cup just one drop of silicon. And I just wanted to show you how this would affect the pour and what changes there would be, if there would be any. So when I'm using silicon, I tend to put it in the first colour, and this just saves clean up, because if I have to put it in a third colour, I need another cup, so I'm just being a bit lazy, but it tends to work for me well. I decided to put the silicon in the iridescent metallic gold, and the reason for this is that these colours, the metallics, are slightly denser than the other colours, and they tend to sink, but putting silicon in them makes them rise up, and so you will see them. For a comparison, I started off with metallic gold in the third cup, but I didn't add any silicon. And you will see that this colour totally disappears from the pour. It goes on holiday, it's sunk without a trace. When I'm using silicon, I always give it a good stir in. Now I know some people say that if you do lots of stirring in of your silicon, you'll only get small cells. Sorry, I can't speak. I've recorded this so many times and I still can't say it properly. Anyway, I always stir the silicon in loads because I find that it's down to the tilting and how much you torch as to the size of your cells. For me anyway, and I know everyone does pours totally differently, but this is what works for me. So in the first cup, I followed the gold with the crimson. In the second cup, I followed the gold with the cer cerulean blue. So you'll be able to see how this also affects the pour. The other colours I were using were black, but only skinny layers because it was quite runny, cerulean blue, Prussian blue, and iridescent silver and Payne's grey. For the other two cups, I was using the same colours, but I added um, a wee bit of Naples yellow as well. And I was just varying the kind of... Um, layers, thickness of layers, and where I was putting the colours. I flipped all the cups over in the top of the canvas, and I was doing this really carefully because I'm using really shonky, flimsy plastic cups, but I want to use them up. Um, and I totally muffed that last one, so lots of paint came out, and you'll see that this does actually have an effect on the pour when you see me tilting and torching. I then gave all the cups a tap just for good luck as I usually do. I let the cups sit on the canvas for a couple of minutes and then I did my pullbacks and I was getting beautiful colours. Now I gave it a torch and this is where I find, for me, I get large cells. If I torch immediately then the cells just slowly get bigger and bigger and the tilting helps expand them. I rotated the canvas because I find it easier tilting towards me and I was just so impressed with those cells, it's amazing. You can see I've had cells in the other two cups but this was just down to the paint densities, there was no silicon in there. I'm also using my paint catcher so I'm slowly tilting the canvas so the paint will drift down to the paint catcher. I always take my time when I'm tilting and I find this keeps the shapes better and I feel as if I'm more in control of what's happening. I'm going to speed up the video now.
you can see because I torched immediately the cells are really large however on the left hand side because I muffed the flip cup some of the paint had escaped and wasn't being really affected by the um, silicon so I really over torched this area because I wanted the cells to go all the way across but these cells are going to be a lot smaller than the larger ones. This is also a great time to look at how the order of your paints affect the pour. So on the first strip I had the metallic gold and then the crimson. The second strip metallic gold and the cerulean blue. I always find that when I'm doing flip cups the first two colours that I use in the cup tend to be the predominant colours and you can see this is the case on this pour. Fortunately I didn't have any attack of flies when this painting was drying and it dried really well. So you can see the beautiful crimson colour surrounded by the metallic gold and this is because the metallic gold had the silicon in and it's just really scrumptious. There's some silver there, there's some darker colours and then when you go on to the next section you see the cells are being surrounded by metallic gold but the inside of the cells are the cerulean blue. You can see the other colours, there's hints of the crimson and the blacks but it's mainly the first two colours in the cup that you see predominantly. The third cup I did put metallic gold in and you can see it's totally disappeared and this is because it was heavier. I didn't put any silicon in to bring it up and it's basically sunk without a trace. I do hope you found this video interesting. I must admit I'm totally fascinated by the whole process of acrylic pouring. There's so many different factors involved, density of paints, layering your colours, using silicon. It's just amazing what changing just one thing can affect the whole pour. Thank you for watching this video today and if you would like to see further paintings please do subscribe. Speak to you soon and do take care. Bye.